So after about two years of owning one of the most popular Doc Martens, are they still worth it? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be reviewing my 1460s. I'll be talking about my first impression, the reason why I got these 1460s, and how I find my Doc Martin size, how I break into my Doc Martins, and how I care for them. I'll also show you the soles of these Doc Martins so that you can see how it's keeping up so far. And lastly, I'll just add some pros and cons, anything that surprised me while I've had these Doc Martins. My first impressions. The 1460s that I bought was the made in England. The reason why I bought some 1460s, I knew they went with everything. Literally, I wanted to get into Doc Martens, I wanted to try them out, and I knew that if I was gonna give it a shot, I didn't just wanna buy any type of Doc Martens. So I made sure I did some research, and the Made in England was one that a lot of people were talking about. So I made an effort to get a good pair of Doc Martens, and it turned out to be the Made in England. I like the history behind it and everything. When it comes to finding your Doc Martens size, there's a lot of information online. Since they say that the Doc Martens, they run big, it's kind of hard to find your Doc Martens size by just reading something or just watching a video. So what I did, I was very lucky enough to have a store that sells Doc Martens. And I went in there, they didn't have my size, but they had a size above mine. I tried that, it did not fit, it was too big. They were the smooth leather Doc Martens, the 1460s. I didn't even want those, but I tried them out. And from that day forward, I kind of knew my Doc Martens size. So I went home ordered them and everything was good. Luckily, when they came in, they fit me. When it comes to breaking into my Doc Martens, since these were my first pair, I really did not know a lot about breaking into Doc Martens. I had not too much idea of what I was doing. So I just kept it simple. I didn't want to mess up my Doc Martens because I've seen so many different things online and it's, it's a lot. So I just stuck to double socking to give me that protection whenever I'm walking. And then I gradually increased how much I walked in these docks. And eventually they just became comfortable. This took me about honestly two weeks to, I'll usually say when it comes to my Doc Martens, I'll say two weeks to six months I can break into them. But it also depends on the leather. Like knowing the leather that you do have can make a big difference in how fast or how slow you break into your Doc Martens. If you want to know more about that, check out this video right here or right here. I don't know, but I just go more in depth talking about how or which ones are the easiest leathers to break into because I feel like a lot of people don't really know or they just buy them just because they look nice, but they don't know what they're getting themselves into. When it comes to cleaning with these Doc Martens, they were very simple. I didn't do too much with them. I mean, it's not like I'm walking through a rainforest every day or anything like that. So an easy cleaning or taking care of these Doc Martens were very simple. I just wiped it down and every now and again, I used a Wonder Balsamic on them just to treat the leather so that it doesn't get too stiff or anything like that. So yeah, when it comes to caring for these Doc Martens, it's very simple. I mean, it's easy, just wipe them down. And even if you don't, some Doc Martens actually look good when they're dirty and just have that cringe look to it, you know? And yeah, cleaning Doc Martens, to me personally, it doesn't take that much. It's not so much of an effort to make them look good. This is the sole of my Doc Martens. As you can see, they've been keeping up pretty well. And also, the amount of times that I do wear these, I'll have to say at least once, maybe twice a week. These are like my go-to Doc Martens. If I have nothing else to wear, I'll just put this on because they look good with everything. But when it comes to the soles, they're keeping up pretty well. Like they're still durable. They still have some type of traction on it and everything like that. Lastly, if the soles go bad, I can always resole them. Overall, for the first pair of Doc Martens that I ever owned, some things that did surprise me was how quick I was able to break into my Doc Martens. Because me personally, beforehand, I played soccer, so I was used to cleats and people stepping on me for a little bit. And then also, I had military boots on for a while, so I was used to that rugged feeling. So maybe that helped me into breaking into my Doc Martens just a little bit faster. And when it comes to something that I don't like, especially with the 1460s. It just has to be like that heel part. I don't like when it like scrunches up. I wish that it can like stay strong enough to stay up and things like that. But unfortunately, you know, I can't pick everything and make it look nice. But my 1460s, they're my like daily driver. Literally, I can wear them with anything. It makes it very easy for me. And also the leather that I do have, I feel like it's a nice in-between leather because it's not like the smooth leather, which is like hella strong but it's not like hella soft like the Pasco leather. And yeah, I really like them. I enjoy them. 
Hopefully I helped you out. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And also check out this crazy video right here that talks about what your Doc Martin say about you. You'd be surprised. Check it out.